Right. I've been sweating literally buckets. Uh, the dog's been out. Now we're going to go on a walk. Now, Anna has told me to make a video because this ain't normal, in her words. Now, I've just dug all this stuff out. And if we're going to go around this way, go around this way. This is uh, the compressed snow that's really getting hard to actually dig out. And when you see the dog, in comparison, you're modeling this, uh, Leela. You might be modeling. You're my little model here, okay? So I might be getting a relative height of the snow on the dog. Right. So, if I sort of, okay, that, that's the dog, and you can sort of see what I've dug out using my manly power to dig this out. The problem is that <laughs> there's another inch or so on top of that making escape difficult. So um, that was meant to be really serious. The thing is that with snow, <coughs> for people who don't understand snow, this is very light and fluffy and it is manageable. You know, you can lift that out of the way. But, you know, the snow's actually higher than the dog. So, you know, we're now going to try. And the problem is that the car can't really reverse into that to get out. Even with 4 by 4 Now, this is the bit that I've done, another one. And to be quite honest... It's, and even the snow shovel that uh, is sort of getting covered with, uh, since I left it there about 45 minutes ago. And as you can sort of see, the amount of snow that's just sitting on top of that, and the snow that's sitting on top of that. So, and uh, that's the sort of stuff I've just dug out. Yeah. And the thing is that the compacting snow is really difficult. It starts getting heavy and difficult. Now, the thing is, I don't think the dog wants to go for a walk. So, we're now venturing into deep snow. This is... Anna's actually quite shocked with this because... Um, Bearing in mind this road was completely clear 12 hours ago, you know, at midnight when we had uh, our <coughs> fireworks, which the dog was totally terrified of. I don't know how far we're going to be able to do this, actually, because this is actually really deep. And I don't really think the dog wants to go out in it. You can see the amount of snow on the on the chairs there. So this is the first of January, twenty twenty four, and bearing in mind this was completely clear, right down to the road surface by the tractor which comes up and this is right up to way past my boots right now, on the other side of the fjord which you can't see they're meant to be getting a meter now the basic point about this is as a solar system spinning around doing what it's doing uh, And last night, the lid of that was clear. And uh, these Birkeland currents, based on the electric universe principle, because all the physics were told is shite. I've just been watching a brilliant interview 
with John Warner the fourth with Daniel List and that's brilliant the whole UFO thing is bollocks uh, the disclosure stuff and basis is gonna be have decided to make some gold handled ba black basis mugs be my bloody mugs right so you know this is so the whole point of the Birkeland currency is that it spins us through into different parts of the gaseous parts of the universe and that sort of plasma energy, that the plasma stuff that they've now only admitted now that we have huge plasma oceans outside the upper atmosphere. And uh, Professor Temple, who spoke at the Origins Conference, was describing how that plasma energy, those, these particles of energy, you can actually see, uh, aha, we got the snowplow coming up. And he's trying to do this, so I think they came up this way before. You can see that this, these people have got their own snow plow, and that's how thick it is. So, and I did ask. So, okay, good I'll ask. Am I going to get out of the way? Can you? Here he is. Be quiet.
Well, there it is. My God, we've caught them at the act. Big history here. Gotta keep you away from that big machine. What a big <laughs> Tell me. Look at that. It's a little bit faster than me with a snow shovel. Well, let's just see what's just been done, which, there, see, what well, took me an hour, of blood, sweat and tears, it's been done in a couple of seconds, so let's go uh, in the snow, in the blizzard, so that the dog can have a shade, and I have to say, I had to go back in because uh, this particular anorak I've got, this coat, is very, very good, but it's a wet weather coat, which means it's waterproof. And the problem about that is you sweat. I don't think so. I'll just take the dog for a walk. I think the idea was uh, you do a bit more. So that's what they do here in Norway. And uh, the thing is to get that to get it while the snow is. My hands are. Anyway, this is no joke. So, that's a little village now becoming an extremely sought after, wonderful place to live. Well, it's always been a wonderful place to live and Anna's lived here a long time. And she's built her house up. Aha, here he comes. Here he comes. Let's go. There were just a little spur on a bit of a country little lane and uh, fun. This is called uh, January the 1st snow blog. Is he coming back? Now the thing about this part of the the thing about this part of the road is uh, that the meltwater, when the sun comes up, this bit gets really, really treacherous. It's really dangerous. <clears throat> and you can see the ice there underneath the uh, snow. And me holding this camera is beginning to get bloody cold. So, again, well, welcome to snow in Norway. It does snow in Norway, but as I say, Anna has said this is not normal, this is a big deal. So anyway, Berkling Currents means that as uh, we're going through 
this region of space, which our ancient forefathers know all about, because that's where they're called Birkeland currents, these electrical currents affect our magnetic field, and that's twisting very severely, and all the solar system elements are, you know, things moving around. So the point is, because our North Pole and South Pole are moved so far off the polar north and south, my friends uh, Roger and Rosemary, they buggered off to some place called Thailand because it's warm there. It's also where the Earth's magnetic field is strongest, that region of the Earth. But where we are, North Atlantic, it's weakest, down by 20% or more. Uh, that wonderful house up there was, uh, I forget the name. She ran the Jupiter Center there, you know, meditation and yoga and all that sort of stuff. That's apparently all coming down this time next year. It won't be there. They're putting five houses there. And I've got to get over this. So here we are, freezing to death, holding the camera. This is actually a, a Samsung A53, which is shite. Uh, because they've disabled and taken away the 35 millimeter plugs it's, you have to put a whole lot of crap extra mics on this and it's got a shit lower frequency response which means it picks up my feet more than anything else it's got higher definition actually my hand is getting bloody cold here so this is not making a bucket of it. this is my second outing it was so sweaty uh hauling all that snow which was taking about seconds uh that, you know, when you're sweating, you can't stay out in the cold. You've got to get dry. Anyway, the Birkeland currents basically mean that the electrical aspects of the solar system are coming into play, which means the upper atmosphere, that's the upper gaseous atmosphere, as the, instead of the massive plasma uh, sea that's outside our outer atmosphere, which are affected by the electrical fields of the moon. Uh, we won't go into the whole bloody thing about Birkeland currents and plasma intelligent uh, beings, tiny particles which comprise of an intelligent region of plasma space, stable on either side of the lunar and orbit. That's another thing. The point is that the upper atmosphere is now less protected from uh, solar flares and the activities of the sun because we're in a moderate minimum. That means less solar, uh, basically less sunspots, more radiation. And because we've got a less of a magnetic field to protect against radiation, that means the atmosphere isn't protected so it gets much more stimulated and the simulated upper atmosphere then retains more hydrogen atoms i.e. water so it rains more and that's what's happening and it also means there's more energy in the upper atmosphere which means you get more violent storms and that's what a modern minimum does so the upper atmosphere retains more water so when it rains it rains more water. And on this case, when the temperature gets colder, you get more snow. And that's what's happening. More snow. It also means that the linear equatorial, the linear parallel norm for the, uh, what do you call the bloody things? Oh, anyway, I forgot the the, the energy la layers, oh, which are linear jet streams. So what they now do is they then start getting unstable and oscillating between north, northern latitudes and southern latitudes, which means you can get suddenly, like we've had in the summer, blazing hot sunshine, but freezing bloody cold winds coming from the north. Likewise, if you're up north, you get lovely hot weather coming up north which gives you, uh, you know, they had a really good summer here. So, uh, my house is getting really cold. So, uh, 
and that is that's an example of how much snow there is outside that camp. So that means right now in England they've had loads of rain. Well, guys in England and the lower latitudes, this kind of thing's coming your way as the temperatures shift. Your rain will turn to snow. And this is what happens when you have lots of snow. I've been here when it's been minus 20 outside and plus 20 inside in the house because of the very high standards of Norwegian insulation. They do a thing called build houses properly so they're properly thermally protected from the temperatures. Unlike in England where they just build a load of crap, take the money, and that's happening with a lot of houses, really badly built houses that's going up in England. Thanks to our extremely uncorruptible system of government in England and the UK and Europe. It was rather revolting to see all those EU flags in on Norwegian TV last night with the proms waving EU flags whilst they sang England will never be slaves which is of course what the EU is all about along with these other parasitic psychopathic so and so anyway that's my little blog and the dog I think is doing what they want anyway that's what you do with it called a garage build a concrete thing to stick your car in it and now we have to do our job right end of 22 minutes of snow in the evening before sunset and soon on January the 1st well here we are welcome to 1994? No, <laughs> 2024. Freudian slip there. Uh, welcome to January the 1st, 2024. From soon. I'll be flying back, hopefully, in 24 hours. And we will be engaging ferociously with the basis TV. And uh, we've just uh, had our first sort of third party content people who want to put stuff on Basis TV uh, and that's important because they've got some very good prod produce which from a different part of the world different languages uh, Arabic I think that's important because we've got to share our knowledge pool our talents and deal with this alien situation thanks to the psychopathic freak show of governments over the years, decades, uh, who want total control. Things don't work that way. Does that tree grow with linear plants, with branches? Anyway, they don't even want the trees. They don't want any organic life here at all. Welcome to Mother Earth in a beautiful No. I'm making a blog. Yeah. I'm just making a blog. Yeah. I managed to get the tractor. Yeah. So it's too much snow now. Yeah, well over here we only have half a meter, over there they have a meter yeah, or more. Just, uh, wind is blowing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I going back to England I think tomorrow. Yeah. And there they have rain. But uh, in England, <laughs> they don't know how to deal with this. No, I know. Happy New Year. Yeah, you do. Once the big tractor goes past. Okay. Hello. Hello. I'm making a little vlog. Even for Norway, this is a lot of snow. Yes, too much. <laughs> What gets me with the electric cars is how do you keep warm? I 
speak Italian, sorry. Oh, you speak Italian. <laughs> I come from Belfast, nobody understands. Okay. Ciao. Happy New Year! You have a little snow in Norway? Yes, I'm going to buy it. <laughs>